The amount of misinformation and possibly disinformation I'm seeing over this story is out of this world. People claiming that Apple has backdoored all iPhones, people saying that Apple allowed there to be backdoors on their iPhones. So I'm gonna deep dive into this and explain to you what this story means, all the facts and the objective information about this story, and then I'll give you some of my personal analysis. But let's just dive right into this, because a lot of people just have clearly not read this story or else there wouldn't be so much confusion over this. So Kaspersky is an organization within Russia and they do a lot of research. Now, you're gonna hear a lot of things about Kaspersky being Russian and blah, 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 but at the end of the the day this story uh, really doesn't have anything to do with Kaspersky itself it could be from anybody else and they found that there is a incredibly sophisticated exploit in fact if you scroll down here let me make sure if I can find it possibly the most sophisticated exploit ever and they're not just referring to Apple devices they're talking about ever you can actually see the insane attack chain that was required to pull off this attack which actually was dependent on four different vulnerabilities in order to pull off all in conjunction but those people reverse engineered the chipset on ios devices in order to also be able to pull this off so you might be asking what did this do if you were infected pretty much everything so uh as long as they sent that iMessage text that installed the malware uh, the, then they would get access to microphone recordings photos geolocations information and other sensitive data to uh the remote mount malicious server and all those infections didn't survive a reboot the unknown attackers kept their campaign alive simply by sending devices a new malicious iMessage. Now, it's not in this article, but I did read another report of this where Kaspersky said they did have one or two devices, I believe, that for some reason did survive the reboot, and they weren't able to actually understand why those two devices survived the reboot, but generally speaking, just FYI, life pro tip, um, I reboot my phone every day because on iOS and many Android devices, when you reboot your device, it actually is going to only uh, start programs that are verified to run for the first time. And so it's kind of a verification process to help prevent uh, malware from persisting on devices after a reboot. So actually a lot of organizations suggest rebooting your device. It doesn't have to be every day, but at least occasionally rebooting your device because if for whatever reason you are infected with something, most of it won't survive after a reboot. Now I mentioned earlier that there was four critical vulnerabilities and there's an important detail. These were four zero day vulnerabilities, meaning not even Apple knew about these. Um, and very few people were aware of these vulnerabilities exist. So these are very, very tight-lipped vulnerabilities, which are seriously tough to come by, let alone four of them that are all used in conjunction. These vulnerabilities that allowed attackers to bypass advanced hardware-based memory protections, which are designed to safeguard device system integrity, even after the attacker gained the ability to tamper with memory of the underlying kernel. This protection is, for context, very strong. In fact, it even mentioned this too, that it's been rarely defeated. Uh, very few people are able to bypass this protection, and it's also present in Apple's M1 and M2 CPU. So again, these exploits are insanely complicated and extremely high up, and whoever is behind these is clearly a very powerful adversary. So there's kind of a pro and con to Apple's approach to security, and it's due to the closed nature of the iOS ecosystem. The discovery process was both challenging and time consuming, requiring a comprehensive understanding of both hardware and software architectures. Um, and then they said, what this discovery teaches us once again is that even advanced hardware-based protections can be rendered ineffective in the face of a sophisticated attacker, particularly when there are hardware features allowing us to bypass these protections. And uh, this is an independent researcher who is the person who published this. And uh, they open a whole research paper that you can actually pull up. And it's part of this. And he actually details in this how you can try to detect if you've been infected with this malware. And by the way, it's still not necessarily easy to do. As you can see from the screenshots, this isn't something that the average person is going to be able to do, nor frankly, sneak preview to the end, they should have to do. And we'll talk about like the actual scope of this issue. It's going to detail uh, the exploit chain here if you wanna actually dig into more of the technical details. And then of course, I'd suggest reading the actual research article from the original researcher regarding this. And I'll leave links to everything in the description so you can read the primary sources for yourself. Now, one thing before I get into more of my personal analysis on this, uh, just objectively speaking, this is not something most of you are gonna have to worry about. These are highly sophisticated, highly targeted attacks that don't impact the general public. Um, and if you're asking if I should be worrying about this, you probably shouldn't. These are things that are being utilized against politicians, journalists, and frankly, uh, probably high level activists as well, uh, which again, I'm not saying those are good things. I'm not saying that uh, this, there shouldn't be a better situation to this, but that's the situation. So just to quickly debunk some things, no, this is not an Apple developed backdoor. 
This isn't Apple even trying to backdoor people. It's uh, simply an exploit. And by the way, um, there are similar backdoors that we've seen on Linux as well. And people don't necessarily say Linux is backdooring everybody. We just say those are exploits. And it's the same thing on Apple's front in this case as well. Now, there is one question I have, which a lot of people have. In fact, the researcher themselves have. There was a hardware component to this in the ARM chip, which they don't know what the purpose for that was. And it was a part of this exploit process, but it was just a part of it. And of course, people are instantly running away with this, thinking it's some Apple built-in backdoor when not even the researcher implies that, nor does the researcher seem to believe that, nor does anyone who has any kind of authority on this matter who knows what they're talking about believe that. It just seems like that there's some weird feature on this chip, likely from ARM or from Apple, they don't know yet, that was part of the exploit process, kind of like how iMessage could have been used uh, as part of the exploit for the messages that were sent via iMessage. It's not that iMessage in itself is inherently harmful, it's that the features within iMessage could have been exploited because of the attack surface provided by those things. So again, this is something I do want answered, but the fact that people are running away with this with crazy conspiracy theories is objectively just not where any of the data or evidence is currently pointing. The other thing I'll add before the personal analysis is lockdown mode prevents this. Okay, so Apple released that feature lockdown mode, which I made a whole video about. So I'd really check out that video if you want to learn more about lockdown mode. Lockdown mode has definitely some things that I would say will make your device less convenient to use. I would not suggest lockdown mode to just everybody out there, but it's also not the most extreme thing. And it's also just a toggle in your settings and lockdown mode reduces the attack surface of your device, which actually prevents some of this uh, attack chain from even being exploited in the first place. So if you have lockdown mode enabled and you're rebooting your device consistently, you actually are good. You don't have to con be concerned about this. It's not a big deal as far as we know and based on the information we have. With that said, let's get into personal analysis. So actually what really sparked me to make this video is I recently made the 2023 Digital Rights Awards thing and I gave Apple the award for their lockdown mode because in my eyes, I still, at the time of recording this too, think that I haven't seen anybody else come forward and provide journalists directly the kind of tools necessary to protect themselves. And Apple's done that. And people who are going, well, they shouldn't have been exploited in the first place. That's a, frankly not a good take because everything is exploited. Are you going to tell me that the countless Linux vulnerabilities should have just been avoided? That's not what happens. So every operating system, every piece of software is going to have vulnerabilities which can be exploited. And that's a basic rule of life. It doesn't matter how secure something is, there is always a way to exploit it. What you need to look at is people's response to it and the kind of precautions and tools and also uh, additional security precautions they're providing their customers to help mitigate the kind of damage that an exploit can cause them. It's actually extremely disingenuous to say that Apple should have just known about this because no one who says that is going to apply that kind of reasoning to the software they like. Um, so we have to be fair about this. We have to look at Linux vulnerabilities and iPhone vulnerabilities and Linux backdoors and Apple backdoors in the same exact way. And the reason why Apple got that digital rights award is because literally anybody watching that has a MacBook, an Apple Watch or an iPhone you can just go in your settings, toggle on lockdown mode, and you're now able to quite literally fight off a government adversary. <laughs> and I'm not, and that's not to say there aren't better options out there, right? I'm not saying that um, maybe Tails or Cubes or something else might not perform better in some of these, which by the way is actually debatable. I'm not saying one or the other is actually necessarily better for certain government adversaries. But what I am saying is the fact that anybody watching this can actually enable a feature with you know, it's a fairly usable phone, even with the feature enabled, is freaking awesome. Um, I've also seen some people ask, well, how come lockdown just isn't enabled by default for everybody? And they're also claiming that's how Apple's enabling people to be hacked because they want people to be hacked. First off, if Apple wanted people to be hacked, they wouldn't be developing lockdown mode. No other big tech companies developed anything like this. Lockdown mode requires a ton of resources and they're actually continually updating it. Lockdown mode wasn't just a little feature they pushed out two years ago. They're actually continually making improvements to lockdown mode in every version of iOS updates. So lockdown mode has actually improved with time and it's actually keeping up with the new exploits and attacks we're seeing from government adversaries. So no, Apple wouldn't just throw money at something that is actually a very, very niche situation unless they actually 
actually wanted to help address it. But to go back to the other point, Lockdown has real limitations. In Lockdown mode, for example, fonts look like garbage in your web browser. Your web browser will be slower. Some sites won't even load in Safari. Um, you won't be able to search through your iMessage content. You can't search for individual messages. Um, you won't get link previews in iMessage. There actually are legitimate limitations to lockdown mode, which for somebody like me is not a big deal. And I think it's worth the security sacrifice, but it's super disingenuous to say Apple should have enabled this for everybody by default. When guess what? This feature doesn't even exist for really any other platform. Google has the advanced protection program, which has a few limitations on Android, but I think it's very, very disingenuous to compare uh, GAPP with lockdown mode, because I think that GAPP is more of a cloud um, based protection versus Apple's is more of a local, like all around type of protection. I still like Google's advanced protection program. I think it's great. Um, I utilize it uh, for the Google account that we do have to use for things like the YouTube channel, but um, it doesn't have that many limitations on Android. If you're using stock Android with GAPP, it does do a few things that are really nice that will improve your security, but it doesn't seem to have like as sophisticated of a, um, of, of a scope in mind as what lockdown mode is trying to achieve, which is lockdown mode quite literally limits your browser by default, limits your iMessage by default, limits uh, link previews and all these types of things that are commonly used for these exploits. So lockdown mode is just much more thorough and really targeted for this specific use case. So yeah, big fan of lockdown mode. And my personal analysis is if you're somebody who is concerned about this, you should have already enabled lockdown mode. And if not, it's never too late. And if you do want to dig into this and you're concerned, am I impacted by this? Read the research article. There's a JavaScript validator that I'm going to leave down below that you can verify to use and try to decide if you're impacted by this. But again, it's pretty high level stuff. Um, and unless you really think that you're somebody who should be concerned about this, you probably don't need to be concerned about this. So um, that's pretty much all I have, I think, on the analysis front. Um, again, I actually really want to commend Apple for this. I wish everybody did this. And that's why it's frustrating for me. Um, I think there's so many things that Apple deserves so much crap for. Lockdown mode is not one of them. Please, please do not criticize Apple for lockdown mode in the way that like our community has been doing, because it's actually like really something that the community needs. I would love to see Linux get a lockdown mode. I would love to see really every piece of software that I use get a lockdown mode. And I think it would just be fantastic for the entire community. So I think it's really just not a good thing to just blatantly attack this because it's from Apple, when Apple has quite literally enabled all of us to be able to help fight one of quite literally the most sophisticated exploits ever found. <laughs> so that's my personal analysis. That's why to give a little bit more context behind why I'm really excited for lockdown mode, why I've been using lockdown mode, and why I think Apple's actually actively really trying to do something about this problem a lot more than any other company's been trying to do. And for people wondering what's in it for Apple, um, Apple's reputation. You know, that's what happens when Apple comes forward and they go, oh, guys, we're super privacy and security respecting, and they don't actually live up to the hype, um, and the marketing kind of blows apart, and people go, what the hell? How are you getting hacked if you have such good security? And so there is a direct financial incentive for Apple, which is Apple needs to maintain their image of being a somewhat secure device. And that's what lockdown mode is for. Lockdown mode is them proving that, hey, we actually can do something about this. And even if you're a journalist and you're fighting a government, you might actually have enough tools to be able to do so thanks to Apple. So I think that's the message they're going for. Again, like I'm trying to be as fair as I can about this because we see similar things happen in other operating systems that people seem to be a lot lighter on and they acknowledge them more objectively. But the moment it happens to Apple, um, I think because there's such a polarizing um, company, people seem to have a different lens on Apple. So this is really to clear up disinformation because I'm seeing a lot of people who say, oh, I have an iPhone, but now I'm going to throw it away because I didn't know that it was backdoored, which is just totally like not right. <laughs> I just, I don't know. Like I actually don't know where this information comes from because no, your iPhone probably is not backdoored. You're probably not one of the few hundred, maybe thousand people in the world who were impacted by this. Um, and even if you were, there are protections in place for this now that you can implement and you have been able to implement for like a, over a year now. So yeah, take away, check out that lockdown vote mode video I made. I think it really breaks down what lockdown mode is and why it's such a cool feature. Um, and otherwise, uh, check out that digital rights award video I made. In fact, I'm just going to link it right now. You're going to see on the screen, the lockdown mode video, go check that out. If you want to see how lockdown mode works and why I think it's so freaking cool. And also subscribe to our channel. If you like this kind of content and I'll see you all next time on tech Lord. Thank you again to our patrons. 